Hi, my name is Oscar Manrique. I'm a plastic surgeon from the Division of Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery at University of Rochester Medical Center in Rochester, New York. First of all, I wanna congratulate Dr. Santa Maria for putting this great meeting, uh, Master Surgeries and Microsurgery, second edition. And also wanna thank him for the opportunity to present today some of my experience on the anterolateral ALT flap. I have no disclosures. So our talk is gonna be based on a little bit of history, anatomy and variations, uh, the indications, but we're gonna focus mainly on surgical approach, anatomical considerations, and some of the tips and tricks to make the operation a little bit easier and safe. And at the end, I will close with a couple of uh, my clinical cases. So as we know, uh, this flap was originally described in the mid 1980s by Song. As you can see here from the original pictures, they already started describing some of the vascular patterns of the descending branch of the lateral circumflex femoral artery. And with that, they could have different type of designs in terms of the skin paddle or medial lateral. Uh, however, uh, several years after this flap, unfortunately lost a little bit of its uh, momentum due to the variation of the anatomy. But as we know, with a little bit of more understanding of the concept of the perforator flap, learning a little bit more about the anatomy, we know that the LT flap is a workhorse flap for many types of reconstructions. So important in terms of the anatomy and the variations, we know that the main blood supply is gonna be given by the lateral circumflex femoral artery, which is a branch of the profunda femoris. And that's gonna give us several branches, including the ascending, the transverse, the oblique, and the descending branch. And this is very important in order to understand how we're gonna dissect the flap as we know that the perforators are gonna be giving the blood supply to this um, skin paddle most of the time are gonna be given by the descending and the oblique branches. So that's something to keep in mind. Not only that, but there are two important anatomical structures. In this case, the rectus femoris and the vastus lateralis. As we know, some of these perforators are gonna come in between a line that is drawn in between these two muscles. And then a lot of times also through the vastus lateralis. So that's why it's very important to identify these two anatomical structures when we're dissecting this flap. Based on clinical studies from the uh, late 1990s, we know that when we draw a straight line from the anterior superior calyx spine to the superior border of the patella, most of these perforators are gonna be located within this middle third. When we divide this line in three equal thirds, the majority are gonna be located in this region. So that's why even several studies down the road, um, more exactly in the early 2000s, they show again the same concept that the majority of these perforators that we draw a skin paddle located within this region uh, is gonna give us the majority of the perforators that we need in order to raise this flap. When we talk about the indications, uh, this flap can be used in multiple ways and fashions. The first is when we do it as a pedicle flap. Most of the time, this is for local regional reconstructions such as the groin, lower abdomen, the perineum, uh, knee defects. And when we talk about gender affirming surgery specifically, uh, for phalloplasty. And when we use it in a free fashion, it can be used from head to toe. So again, this shows us that this is a workhorse flap for many indications um, and many utilities. In terms of the advantages, it has a favorable donor site, specifically when we close this uh, donor site primarily. Studies have shown that when we do a pinch tense and overall a width of no more than eight centimeters is gonna give us the opportunity to close this wound in a primary fashion. Uh, has a relatively easy dissection, especially when these perforators come from the septum. It has a very long and generous pedicle up to 16 centimeters and with a variety of uh, favorable skin paddles for shapes and sizes. So we can accommodate this flap for any type of reconstruction. In addition, when we need to add some bulk, uh, as we have described before too, uh, compound flaps can use a little bit of the vastus lateralis in order to increase that volume. Chimeric uh, flap structures, when we have more than one perforator, <clears throat> and this is mainly gonna be used for head and neck reconstruction. And lately with the use of the duplex or ultrasound, we can perform ultra thin flaps for, to reconstruct uh, very shallow and thin surfaces such as the dorsum of the foot or the hand. Um, in terms of these advantages, uh, if the skin paddle that we require is large, unfortunately this um, donor side has to be closed with a skin uh, graft. Um, for obese patients, the thickness of that flap can vary. And when we have intramuscular dissection, some studies have shown that the patients can lose up to 25% of that functionality of the thigh. 
Now, uh, when we talk about the anatomic considerations, we know that this flap is going to be mainly composed of skin fat, and depending on the indications, we can use fascia or not. So this can be a subfascial dissection or a superfascial dissection, depending on what are the indications. As I mentioned before, um, in order to close this wound in a primary fashion, most of the times using the pinch test and eight by 25 centimeter uh, width and length of the flap uh, are gonna be very useful. And we use it for gender confirmation surgery, phalloplasties, the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve plays a good role for this type of reconstructions. And as I mentioned before, most of these branches and these variations are gonna be coming from the oblique and descending branches of the lateral circumflex femoral artery. Uh, the diameter of the, of the artery is generous too in order to do microsurgery and usually comes with more than one bay and as I'm going to show in the next couple of slides, uh, which it helps uh, to decrease congestion, especially when we're using big flaps. And the length of the pedicle is long enough that we can be outside of the zone of injury when we talk about trauma or outside of the zone of radiation or cancer when we talked about cancer reconstruction. So how do I mark this flap? And I believe that this is gonna be one of the most important slides of my presentation. So first of all, I start marking the anterior superior iliac spine and the superior lateral border of the patella. I draw a straight line between these two structures. And why is this important? Because this line is gonna mark that difference or create that groove in between the rectus femoris and the vastus lateralis. This line, I divide it actually in three equal thirds. And as I show from the data, um, most of these perforators are going to be located within this middle third. However, we have to keep in mind that some of these perforators sometimes can come a little bit more proximal or a little bit more distal. And so we have to move this skin paddle, which is one of the first tricks in order to avoid injury to those perforators and have an equal distance of perfusion for this flap. In addition, that medial marking that I have on the image is also very important not to do it very close, which I think it's a big mistake when people draw the center of the skin paddle is based on that line that I mentioned before, but that the center of the flap has to be based on the perforators that I already marked based on these uh, type of um, anatomical structures. So how do I raise and um, uh, get this flap going? So first of all, I do my first medial incision. Again, the depth of that flap is gonna be based on um, the indication that I have, if I'm gonna use fascia or not. Um, and after that, I do a medial to lateral dissection in order to find these perforators. At this point, I stop. I do not uh, dissect any of the perforators, but I want to see where they're coming from. As I mentioned, there's a clinical variation of where these perforators can be coming from, and it can make the um, anatomical dissection a little bit easier. So this is an example of one of my patients. This is a subfascial dissection. There with the black arrow, you can find the perforator and look at the uh, direction of those fibers. And that's the other uh, key point when we dissect these flaps as the rectus femoris goes from superior medial to inferior lateral. And that's going to show me that I'm going to be very close to that septum. Now, in this particular case, I don't know what branch is giving me that perforator. So then what I do is just bluntly open or separate the rectus femoris from the vastus lateralis. And as you can see here on the image, that branch is going to give me uh, a straight shot right there where I need my perforator. So that's very important as, as I'm going to show in another slide, there could be multiple branches. So we have to be cognizant about that variation. The other key thing when we're starting to dissect these flaps, as you can see this white structure right here, it's very common to see underneath the rectus femoris. So that's going to be another anatomical parameter when we dissect these flaps. Here's an example of I was mentioning. There's two different types of branches here, an oblique, a descending, two type of perforators. So which one would we use? Everything depends on the uh, skin paddle design, the indication, if I wanna have a longer uh, branch or a shorter branch or depending on the type of design that I need in order to create that. So that's why I bluntly dissect first, identify the branch and then based on the perforator, then I just go where the money is. So after I perform that medial, dissect that, um, the incision, dissect these perforators, identify the pedicle, then I wanna secure my flap medially to make sure that doesn't shear because that's the other common mistake that sometimes can happen. And then I do my last incision, which is lateral. And again, being very careful not to skive medially in order not to cut the septum or some of the perforators because that will damage the flap. So after I have this dissected, I know there's good hemostasis and I'm good to go. And I'm gonna show you some of my clinical cases in terms of the utility of this flap. This is a case of gender affirming surgery, phalloplasty in a pedicle fashion. So you can see with very good results preserving those nerves, as I mentioned before. 
Uh, this is another example of a uh, advanced colorectal cancer with invasion to the pubic area, uh, scrotum. And look how the ALT flap again in a pedicle fashion can cover very nicely uh, some of these defects giving a pretty good result. Again, as I described for uh, people with long uh, stay in the ICU and frozen abdomens that we need to reconstruct the abdominal wall, the confound flaps are also when we use a little bit of vastus lateralis, it can reach tremendously in order to cover uh, larger defects as you can see here in the picture. For uh, lower extremities, for sarcomas, again, in this particular circumstance, doing a uh, superficial thin dissection and even sometimes with the ultrasound can give you a really nice result uh, to cover these defects with no issues. Uh, when we have chimeric flaps, as I mentioned before, with two different types of uh, perforators, it's very useful to cover um, head and neck cases for the mucosa lining, for the external lining. And in some circumstances, as we have shown before, you don't even need to cut completely the skin paddle, but you can even fold it and do a two level inset as we have described. In addition for uh, larger uh, head and neck uh, cases for small defects, as you can see on the upper picture, reconstruction of external ear canal or big accentuations of the face uh, <clears throat> based on the, um, the OT flap that can cover very nicely all these type of defects. So overall, in conclusion, the LT flaps is a workhorse flap with a very reliable um, skin paddle with very, very designs. I would probably emphasize with being careful with the donor side, especially if we can able to close it primarily in order to not to leave any uh, donor side defects. As I mentioned, it can be utilized as a compound or chimeric flap and always, always very important in order to keep those anatomical variations as we know that they can change based on the branch that is gonna give the blood supply. And again, with new technology, uh, the duplex is very promising in terms of raising these flaps, uh, very ultra thin for very shallow defects. So again, I wanna uh, congratulate Dr. Santa Maria for putting this uh, amazing meeting, master service in microsurgery, and uh, for the opportunity to be here. I wanna thank also my team at University of Rochester Medical Center for their support. Thank you very much.